Welcome to the first of a four part series where I, Simon Whitehead, are going to go back to the basics for ferritin. No matter who you are, who you think you are, how many times you go out, or as good as the ferrets you work. So the first part of this series, I'm going to take an in-depth look at the difference between a ferret and a working ferret. What do you want from your ferret? Does colour affect your judgement? Size? Large? Small? Thin? Or do you want the ferret just to flirt with the rabbit and turn back at the third hint of trouble or hard work? Or do you want a sticker, a grinder, a ferret that isn't going to come out as long as there's a rabbit alive in the warren? All these are questions you've got to ask yourself when you're thinking about breeding your ferret. For this reason alone, we've got to admit, the only thing to change in ferreting is opinions. And opinions will always shape how we're going to go about things. Fashions, fads, situations, your terrain, how you're on the dale, or you've got chalk, or are you in the sandy lands where digging is a must? All these are questions you want to ask yourself when looking for a suitable stud for your ferrets. Get it right, you're going to get poetry in motion. You get it wrong, and I'm afraid you're only going to have another rosette chaser or pipe racer. What we're after is good work and ferrets. We are going to put the ferret back into ferritin. Well here we have the two main ingredients to my ferret team. The male ferret, the female ferret. We call the male ferret the, the hub, the female ferret the jail. Now you may have regional differences, dogs for, for the males or, or bitches for the, for the females, but for the good of what I'm used to talking about, we'll call the male, the entire male a hob, and the female we'll call a jail. Now what do I look for in a good ferret? At this particular time of the year, we're now thinking about breeding and improving our stock. There's no point in breeding if you can't improve what you've already got because otherwise you're just going backwards. So what I'm looking for in my ferrets is something that's very used to being handled. You know, you've got your, your fingers in there, just not worried about that. 12 inches tall, two pounds in weight, big ears, you wouldn't want to go anywhere near this because what we put in this animal is a little magic ingredient and that's called a prey drive. Without a prey drive, you've just got a pet. Pets ain't going to harvest the rabbits, ain't going to do my job. What I'm looking for in my, in my Jill ferrets is something that's got a nice elongated body. It is handleable, used to being handled and picked up in all sorts of situations. You know, a lot of people just get their ferrets used to being picked up in one way. And when you're out in the field, you haven't got that luxury, you know, if you're digging holes or you want to get it quickly out of a hedgerow, you've got to be able to pick these animals up in whatever way you want. So as you can see, this thing is as cool as a cucumber. It's well socialized. Well, that's because over the generations, we've bred into these animals their social skills. Problem is, because of fads and fancies, a lot of people want to put the EU pole cats back into these animals. What's the point? We've hundreds of years, our forefathers and ancestors have spent a great amount of time taking those bad traits out. Why put them back in? Of course, what about when we don't want to breed? Well, this is the time of year, all the gills are in season, and I need to take them out of season. Not by mating though, I don't want all these unwanted litters. What I'm going to do is introduce them to Shaggy. Now Shaggy's so named because he lives in the penthouse suite. He's a big bruiser of a hob, he's a seasoned worker, but he's had a little trip to the vets. He's had a vasectomy. So really, what he is is a hoblet. He's a vasectomized ferret, and what he does, he takes all me gills I don't want to breed from out of season. So therefore, I'm not reintroducing hormones into them through a gill jab, which you can do, which is a very good way of taking them out of the season. Because I've got a lot of gills and I've got short arms and long pockets, I'm going to use nature as nature was intended. So because this little fella has been tucked and tied, he's not going to get them pregnant because it's the actual act of mating which will take them out of season. So I'm using the old ways with a hint of modern day thinking to make sure my gills have a happy and healthy summer time recuperating from the hard winter's work. As we saw from last year's film, we were breeding the ferrets. Well, this little Jill here is one of the results of last season and she's been an absolute stormer in the Warrens. So what we're gonna do, we may breed from her next year, but I just want to give her another season under the belt just to make sure she wasn't a flash in the pan. But as you can see, she's beautifully marked, got nice dark eyes, nice light fur there, so I can see her in the undergrowth. But above all else, she knows exactly what a rabbit is. And that's what I'm looking for at the end of the day, a ferret that knows what a rabbit is. 
good food, plenty of care, great housing, and these animals are going to live average five, six, seven years. I mean, pet ferrets have lived in at double figures now, which is fantastic. But they ain't had the hard work that these little chaps have. So therefore, if I can get five seasons, probably six years out of them, I'll be very happy. What we've got to do is make sure they do get the best of everything. So any ferreter out there, no matter how many times you go out or what ferrets you've got or what colour, or if they're polecats or albinos or white ones or pink ones, just make sure that they have the best of everything. Because we often forget the hard environment they work in. Give them the best of everything and these ferrets will give you the best sport money cannot buy. Well that's it. So we've now looked at the ferret, what we need from our ferrets to grace the warren with their present and find them flush the rabbit. In the next stage of this series, I'm going to have an in-depth look at the essential equipment you need for going out ferreting.